This week's episode is brought to you by Colorado Junk Removal. No more junk, no more stress. Got some junk laying around the house? You know, that refrigerator that hasn't worked in two years. Yeah, the washer that you said you were going to fix, but you never have. Absolutely. That couch that's got a big hole in it that you're not probably ever going to give to anybody. Fence posts that you're never going to fix either. <laughs> I exactly. see a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> then you need to call Colorado Junk Removal. What's that number, Dan? 719-249-1717. You know what? You can also visit them on the web at coloradojunk.com. Dot com. Or you can send them an email, cojunkremoval at gmail.com. That's right. Or give them a call. Like we said, 719-249-1717. Matt will come take care of all of your junk. And remember, no more junk, no more stress. And we're good. All right. Ready to go. Ready, ready to go. Ready to go. We're ready to go. Let's hit it. Punch it, Chewy. A quiet good. Attack warning. Attack warning. Attack warning. Is it for real? Attack warning. It's for bloody real. Live from Colorado Springs, the Drop Culture Podcast. I want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, copy. This is not an exercise. Come on, put it down. Welcome, everybody, to the Drop Culture Podcast. I'm Dan. I am Brock. And this is that podcast where we grab that piece of pop culture that you forgot about or missed and shine it up real nice and cram it in your ear holes. We got a special going way back for this one, Brock. This may be the oldest movie we've done on this show. You know, honestly, I think so, too. I, I do believe really? so. Yeah. I don't think we've gone beyond, like, 65, maybe? Yeah, that sounds about right. M- no, no, maybe more 70s. I have to go back and yeah. look at the archives. Maybe you guys could let us know. Right, right. You can dig in the archives anytime as well. <laughs> yeah, what is the oldest episode of the Drop That's Culture right. Podcast? That's the question of the week. And if you answer that question, I'll send you a sticker. Bam. Boom. Done. Uh, okay. So what movie are we doing, Brock? <laughs> yes. So as you know, if you are a, a longtime listener, Thursday is our movie episode or whatever we decide that we want to talk about, but not like our quick cast. So this is a more structured kind of a deal. This week is going to lead to a whole bunch of other weeks, but we're starting it out with The Fly from 1958. Yes. Because, you know, of course, the next movie we're going to do, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's The Fly. This is, um, yeah, the first in our series of The Shit. <laughs> I mean... Dropping Deuces Season 4. <laughs> <laughs> not quite Dropping Deuces. I was trying to get an alliteration, or not an alliteration, but um, something where I could use the shit that attracts flies. Oh. You know, like, get that somehow in a thing. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at any okay. rate, so the this idea just came from we were thinking about doing the fly too. I was like, you know what? Let's let's do the fly and then the fly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and then we thought, you know what? You know what's even better than that? Let's do the fly two after after that and. Lead that into our series of drop and deuces. So that's coming up. Yeah. So if you haven't been around for a while, we have a. I think we've done two of them now. Drop and deuces series. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the number two. Deuce. Deuce. Suck. So this is. Yeah. This will be the <laughs> deuce trace. <laughs> deuce trace. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we like we did Conan the Barbarian and uh, a lot of number two. Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was number two. Duh. House two. Which I love. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. It's, it's a good, good movie to watch. Listen to that episode. You're on weed. Yeah. <laughs> when you're high on weed. 
Uh, but at any rate, yes, The Fly, 1958. Let's get into it, Brock. 1958's The Fly. Um, you know, okay. This movie, to me, is such a great movie. I, I would kind of put it in the top tier of the monster movies. It should be included with kind of, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, stuff like that, even though they were different companies. It was Universal versus you know, sure. 20th Century, Century Fox. Fox yeah. um, and this was one of Fox's um, first really big hits. Usually they were put on a double bill from what I read. Like um, the Fox, Fox studio was kind of like the underling. So you would have your main studio, right? Um, that that so owned like Fox. Universal or? Yeah, it was something like that, right? Yeah. So they would always put the Fox feature as the double. Okay. So that way you could watch the second film, right? Or they throw it in there, and it would actually be cool. Well, this one had a big budget. Nobody knows what the real budget was. That's the only thing with it. Like, this one had estimates from, like, 250000 to 500000 um, But it made $3 million. Wow. Plus, it's been re-released a couple of times in in different countries, Belgium, things like that, right? So they always, they always kind of come back to this one. But this one is one of those... Um, Panavision, badass, Cinemascope. Cinescope. Yeah. Um, color by Deluxe. Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. a there's a common, um, with this movie, there is one common, uh, whatever you call it, Mandela effect, that there's some people that think that they saw it in black and white, but they never did. Because it's The Fly 2, Return of the Fly, with Vincent Price. Yes. <laughs> from the Misfit song. Um, uh, that was black and white, and then Son of the Fly or something like that was same thing, right? So, but this was always in color. Yeah, this one was always in color. It was a beautiful movie. Looks yeah. awesome. The effects Absolutely. are bitching. You know, it's just it. It takes a while to kind of go, but then all of a sudden the movie's over with, and you're like, "How did that happen?" Well, it's it's more of than just horror or whatever. Your normal horror science fiction. It's also a kind of a mystery. Yeah, mystery with like a humanity type of a thing. Like absolutely, there's, not there's some it. levels. Yeah, you know, to yeah. The movie, which is pretty awesome for this time. Um, and and the writer of this movie, the original writer, it was a story sent into Playboy. Mm-hmm. Um, Lagellan, I believe, was the guy's name. I yeah. could be wrong. I'll see. Um, it. Yeah, but uh, the gentleman who actually wrote the screen screenplay. Uh, James Clavel, mm-hmm. he wrote The Great Escape. Let's see, I Come mean, on. he's a good writer. Yeah, I mean, this is where you cut your teeth. Um, but they had um, it was a great story. It was again, it was a, a typical movie for this time to where you introduce the characters. But this one told kind of a cool way that they did it. You know, you have um, the first part where you know. Pepe Le Pew's out there, and he's like, "Oh, look at you, little little bitty kitty! You know, you want some milk, eh? Yeah. You know." And then he hears a drill press, and she runs away. Right, right. So that it, was Gaston. Yeah, Gaston. And uh, so then you see that there's this, been this horrific thing. You don't really know what's going on. Right. And then that's whenever she finally cracks and says, "Okay." She's going to tell a story, and then it wraps it all the way back up, right? You know, and you think it's going to go Tarantino one way. Know that. Yeah, yeah, and it's badass the way they do 1958. it. Nineteen fifty-eight. Yeah, and Vincent Price, of course, the the big name. That's why they they. That's one of the reasons why this had more credence is because it had him in it. Right. So already they had a box office draw, sort of, right? And it was a science fiction a movie called The Fly. So Twentieth Century Fox. I have I, to say something real quick. I have to interrupt for just a moment. Um, he didn't really. They didn't really Tarantino that. That's no. Yeah, that's it's, totally it's more formulaic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was just yeah. being silly. I well, no, want, no, no. I didn't want to get that hate mail. That's <laughs> yeah. all I'm saying. No, Tarantino. Why? Why did you say that? <laughs> um, and that's not how our listeners sound. No, our no, listeners no, not at all. Cool. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, some yeah, of yeah. them do get mad at me occasionally. It, it, <laughs> it was not a um, perfectly linear story, yeah, like would right, be told. Right. Well, and the great thing that they do is they do the warbly warblies between the story, like when it, she's telling the story, they do the little warbly warbly warbly. <laughs> I assume that's what that sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they do that at the end of the story too to go back to. Our time, yeah. Cut you know, back present. to the present. Yeah. They go to the past and they go yeah. back in time. <laughs> but okay, so 
That yeah, again, that was another thing. I I would almost and I'm probably wrong, thinking that this movie put 20th Century Fox on the map. I don't know the history of Fox. Maybe. I just don't know where the hell they got from where they were to Fox News. Or <laughs> yeah, or That's... they went from this to Disney. Uh, well, um, yeah, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. So Fox, um, of course, everybody knows. Some I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know to, anything. Maybe I'm, we'll do a Fox episode. Sometime. Yeah, I'm gonna have to vet that one. But, but as it goes now, we should talk about the fly. Yes. Yes. So the movie came out on a day that's near and dear to me, July the 16th, yeah, 1958. So so I didn't realize that until the other day. I probably read about it. Ten that, years that's ago, your birthday. Yeah, yeah. Also, my mother's birthday. I know, right? She was three years old when this movie came out. See, that's crazy. Shout out to Rebecca. Yeah, there you go. Hey, she friend of the show. Because I, she hates being called Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> but as when I saw that, I was like, "Damn, the so atomic hot. bomb dropped, and then this happened." <laughs> right, Damn, right? right? Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so we'll get. Let's get into the principal cast of this. If you if you don't know what the fly is. Good You're luck. about to find out, yeah. and then you should watch it. Yeah, you need to Absolutely. really watch this. One of my this favorite is, monster movies. This is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Not just a good monster movie. And, it and that's what I like about it. And it wasn't so in-your-face monster movie either. No. The no. whole time. So we'll get into that when we get yeah. into the story. But, yeah. yeah, let's get into the players, my friend. So uh, the director, Kurt Newman, right? Yes. Um he did a lot of films before this, but he died a month after the premiere. Yeah. And this was his most successful movie. He never knew that. Yeah. I remember never that somewhere knew it. Yeah. Well. That's crazy. Um, he had done a lot of stuff. I mean, like they got this movie, The She Devil or She Devil, and then Rocket Ship XM. You know, he was kind of into that stuff. He sure. was like an Ed Wood with money, you right. know? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so, yeah, which is really cool. Because he kind of had that edge, but yeah, he had money again. I think this really all kind of comes down to having a good production. Right. I mean, um, the the characters were, were well done. You know, they had the story. They had everything. Right. And it had the classic tropes, like her screaming, you know. Pass it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the title sequence, again, um, beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love Absolutely. the way that looks with the, the screen and everything. It's just, it's the letters, everything like that is just so beautiful. But then the the actual movie poster too. God, it's one of my favorite ones. It you it, it's just so I don't know, sweet. It just it's really cool. <laughs> it's just really cool. I can't really describe it on that that side of it. But yeah, so that's your first kind of I- inclination of this. You know, you get to see that where you're like, oh, what is that? And then they start off in this weird very vibrant close up of a fly, you know. Right. So the director was doing really well right. with that. So obviously he was a pretty cool director for this because he had money, right? You know, that's that's the fly really just kept going in the screen and stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really where I think this comes down to is they had some sort of a budget, so they can make a good story. Absolutely. Well, yeah, and I think that they had a, a clear idea of what they wanted to do. Um, you had a direct. It seems, anyways. I don't know this because I didn't know these people. Um, I have no insight, but it seems as if they both had the same vision, right? You know, like the director picked up the writer's vibe really well, very well, yeah. Because yeah. I think they they saw it, they tried to option it, um, and then he turned in this, and I think basically the very first draft of the script was almost what you see. Like, literally, it was one of the best screenplays that somebody had, had um, written at that time. So they didn't have to do a lot of changing. Right. So it was like everybody was kind of putting everything into something that was just, I don't know, which, which was different. Now, of course, like you said, the writer wrote, you know, The Great Escape and some Shogun stuff. And yeah. He was really kind of all over the place, which is pretty cool. Um, when did he pass away? Um, sep- September 7, 1994. Well, he was born in 21. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, then let's get into the stars. Okay. So you got David. I can't say his name. David lady. Hedison? Hedison? Yeah. Okay. Um, but he's not credited. He's credited as Al Hedison. And he plays um, Andre Delam. Delam. Who is our t- 
titular character. He's the main. He's the main person. Yeah, he's <laughs> the fly. Um, he was on an A team. Yeah, so that was really cool. There you go. He's got an A team credit. <laughs> a team and a Knight Rider credit. Uh, Patricia Owens. Um, she played uh, Helene, uh, the Lom, which is uh, Andre's wife. Mm-hmm. Of course, you have Francois Delam. Which is... Vincent Price. The one person that I'd bring back to life. <laughs> the brother of uh, Andre. And I didn't say it. But I don't know what Patricia did. I didn't do any homework on eh, Patricia. She was one of those act, uh, actresses. I'm sure was... she was awesome. I'm sure yeah. she had a great career. I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Price, obviously Vincent Price. Vincent, Vincent Price of Price, thriller right? fame. You know what? That used to scare the shit out Absolutely, of me. Absolutely, dude. I was scared to listen to that part. Absolutely. Every time I, I had the tape, and I'd be like, mm. Darkness falls across the land. I'd be like, nah, I don't <laughs> want to listen to that part. No. And the radio I had yeah. still had that in there, and I left it outside for like a year. Push play on it, and it played at that point. And I was oh. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Brock peed himself. Yes, that was one of the only things that's truly ever scared me. Besides running to the through the house by yourself when you're you're like five, right uh, in the dark, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, jump on the bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Vincent Price, Vincent Price, yes. What, you, do you know Vincent Price? I mean, not personally, okay. but have you done reading about Vincent Price? So I think I told you I took a course on horror, um, movies specifically, and. Uh, yeah, a, a little bit, but like that was a long time ago. Um, obviously, I know Vincent Price from The Raven. That's like something that stands out. Um, he's been in so many things. The Roger Corman. Yeah, you every, know, everything. Edgar Allan Poe movies. Yeah. He was so much more than that, right? I watched a 15-minute video, so I know everything about him. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that works out that you did research for this episode. Yes. <laughs> I watched a 12 minute YouTube video. I know everything about him. Sweet. Um, some really cool facts about Top 10 it. things you didn't know about Vincent Price. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. was it really? It was nice. something like that. It was Sweet. like Vincent Price was. And it, you know, uh, I don't know. It was, it was Anyways, a cool video. But you could share. But there, there, there is also a biography. Um, from the A and E okay. biography that's on there. It's like an hour and nineteen minutes. Those are pretty oh, good too. Yeah, I might watch that. Yeah, um, just like the the Lost Stooges movie, Three Stooges yeah, movie. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. That's on. There. Anyway, so in my fifteen minutes of study, <laughs> I learned how extremely I don't know badass he was. You know, like Vincent Price was six foot. Four fucking four. Oh yeah, he's the dude, a tall dude was big, right? Instead of saving up to buy a bike or something like that when he was a little kid, he was saving up to buy a Rembrandt original sketch. So the dude That's loved badass, art. Yeah. That's one thing that he kept his entire life is he loved art, right? That's why he went by the name Francois. In <laughs> right, right. So, for one, he went and got a degree in art history. He went overseas nice. to get it during World during World War Two, I think he might have okay. been over there at that time, but probably not. But um, <laughs> yeah, right. His his father and his mother were very big anti-Semitic. Really? Yeah, which was weird. So himself, he was like, "Oh, well, you know, they're doing this, and I'm he's young and impressionable." He was like, "All right, look at Hitler. Hitler, go," you know. Kept that a secret his whole life. Really? Really did. Because when he got done, he became one of the, I don't know, uh, one of the uh, most humanitarian kind of a people. He accepted everything. LGBTQ awesome. before anybody else. Everything like that. His daughter even came out to him and he's like, you know, I know how you feel. Cause there's always that I, he was he was a big actor, but it's still at the time where he didn't come out, you know. Right. But he had kids too, and he had three wives and blah blah blah. Right. So it sure. doesn't matter. He was he was like a very um, he was way ahead of his time. So then with his art stuff, um, he decided to start doing plays and stuff like that, which he kicked ass at. Then he got into the movies, and he was playing like comedy roles and bit things and. Of course, he was in the Ten Commandments after this, right? <laughs> where he was the uh, the slave driver. Um, but 
you know his voice, you know everything like that, right? Um, he got into the horror part of it, kind of took off, right? Right. He never forgot the art part. So he collected paintings. He donated a whole bunch of paintings to um, the American Indian. It, it's it's a museum or something like that in Santa Fe. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. I didn't even know that. So uh, and I was there the other day, <laughs> and so um, he well, did my that. trip through Santa Fe. I found out. Yeah, mm. and also he was the. Uh, the God, some president made him the the head of Indian culture and art and you know kind of like arts and crafts or something like that. Really, he was he was kind of promoting, you know, hey, we need to help this. So he he opened up all these different centers and things like that around this fifty eight fifty nine time too. He's kind of started like kind of picking up that steam, right? Right. Then later in life. <laughs> With his third wife, they wrote a cookbook. Okay. Right? After that, <laughs> he uh, had a cooking show in England. Okay. Yeah. And he would take normal household stuff that somebody would have in their cupboard and make a freaking gourmet meal. Really? Yeah, he was a badass, right? Right. Um, he was one of the very first, like, uh, how do you say? Um, he was He was on the right side of everything. After he was on the wrong side for one time, sure. sure. He but he was right young side. and impressionable, and grew up that with that. I'm not, right, I'm not excusing right, right. the, yeah. But uh, there's there's a reason, you know what I mean? Yeah, he was even gray listed during the really? McCarthy McCarthyism, gray listed, which means because you got blacklisted, and nobody wants I didn't to work know with there you. There were like levels. I didn't mean either until the, <laughs> until I saw that I was like, whoa! Until I watched this 15 minute video, yeah, 15 minutes, <laughs> and I know everything about everything. Uh, <laughs> And so we do podcasts like I'm a mechanic. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like let me put the screwdriver on the wheel. Ah, yep, time and belt's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just watch a 15 minute YouTube video. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's how you replace that yeah, bar. Cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he uh, he spoke out against, he was one of the very first um, people to kind of do a public service announcement for AIDS. Okay. In the 80s, saying, hey, stop. Not as crazy as you're thinking, you know what I mean? You can be right. in the same room. Um, God, he he's been on like a deep purple record, Alice Cooper record. Yeah. The dude's like a oh, yeah. legitimate badass, right? And then you look at his body of work, and yeah, he worked with Peter Laurie, he worked with everybody. He was the invisible man right. in the invisible man part two. Um, plus, you know, pit in the pendulum, bitch. Yeah. yeah. You know, everything that he did, masquerade death, it, it uh, what what was the other one? The Fall uh, of the House of Usher was he in? The yeah, movie? and then uh, House on Haunted Hill. Okay. Um, and he did the very first version of Night of Anubis, or not Night of Anubis, but um, the Last Man on Earth. That um, he did that movie way before Will Smith got the role. Oh, I Am Legend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was basically he did the the Richard Matheson, um, the very first. Okay. Where he was it. You know, and then you got Omega Man, then you got Will Smith. Gotcha. So he did the very first one. I don't think I've seen that. It's it's a public domain movie. Okay. Is uh, it like more like the book, you think? I think. Hmm. I need to find I need to find that story anyway. Um but yeah, so he God, I mean the dude was like all over the place. Just a literal badass. Right. And in this movie, no different. Even though his part's really small. But he he has a presence about him, you know. He's Vincent Price. For one, he was like a foot taller than yeah, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> you can hug me yeah. at my waist. Yeah. He's on the house. Uh okay. So now you know the characters. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, one more. Because yeah. we also have Herbert Marshall as the inspector, Charis. But more importantly, in a Dick York Sergeant uh York. <laughs> Dick Sergeant, uh, Dick Sergeant, Sergeant York. Like conundrum. <laughs> yes. You also have Charles. So you had Herbert Marshall. This is Charles Herbert. And Charles Herbert is like the he's the kid. He's the son of our our main character and his wife. And he has been in like seventy five thousand movies in like ten years. He was in a, a just a bunch of movies in ten years. Yeah, a little kid. But I remember what I remember him from is 13 Ghosts, the original one from 1960. 
Yeah, see, that was... The 13th Ghost, whatever that... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Cause they did the remake with the monk guy. Yeah, yeah. which was it pretty was, freak, it was crazy. Good. Yeah. But it was definitely darker, even more, you know, even more so. But uh, he was Brock in that, or not Brock. Uh, <laughs> That's Achoo. my name. Hold on. Your name is what? Dan. Maybe his name was Brock. <laughs> I, now I've got to look because I'm like... Well, okay. But... This kid, like, seriously, like, I, I, it wasn't really 75,000 movies that he did. I, I was making that number up. <laughs> um, he was in 75 movies in four, four years. His, I'm just saying, like, his IMDb is long. Yeah. And he didn't do it in, a, like, I think he quit in 68. Hmm. And as a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. His parents stole all of his money. Buck. That was his name. I was close. Buck. Not Brock. I'm going to start calling you Buck. Buck. <laughs> Come on, Buck. You can call Buck. me Buck. You know who... Can um, embrace your inner Texas? <laughs> who we don't, I, I guess, give... I, I don't think a lot of people do. Kathleen Freeman? Mm -hmm. Okay. She was the nun in Blues Brothers. Yes. You have seen her on absolutely everything. She was in this movie. Right. Which, uh, again, you know, um, as a background kind of a character, she's always good. Was she stone face? The, the like, maid or whatever? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's, like, in initially what came to my, like, she made a look at some, during some scene, and I was like, she's a seven Mary three song. <laughs> 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 she's she was on. She had the stone face. I th she's probably got a Walker Texas Ranger, you know. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, credit, but uh, <laughs> Chippendale Rescue Ranger. She did a lot of voices, and then also the nurse was the voice of Cruella Deville. Ah, yeah, and the narrator for Sleeping Beauty or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, so we we have some people. Yeah. You know, there's some people. There's some people in this. They're pretty good, <laughs> right? Um, most of so them ended up doing it. Disney. <laughs> Even Vincent Price did. Great mouse detective. <laughs> okay. So now, for your listening pleasure, the fly. Maybe I should put something there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's a good idea Okay So You ready to get into the uh, Let's the get into this movie Alright So again We already talked about the, the titles the Title yeah, sequence was yeah. Bitchin Cinescope Yes And then oh, Yeah looks... Again we see the uh, The uh, um, The color is cool man The color looks great It looks awesome And it's not even fake no. You know That's like I always Every time I see a movie like that, I'm wondering, or any any period piece that you see with the, that they look completely different. What if you had the same cameras and the same kind of lighting right now? Right. Would it look the same? Yeah. I guess. Could you capture that same look? Right. Right. That's something that I'm like, mm, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe a John Wayne movie or something, <laughs> but. This would be kind of hard because they do a lot of color correction, probably, the, the process. I know we're talking about The Fly. I'm going to digress for just a moment because I think it would have been really cool. You know, like after Bruce Lee passed, there was all like Bruce Lai and Bruce Lay, and <laughs> Bruce whatever. Yeah. It would have been cool if there was like John Payne and <laughs> you know what I mean? They just kept going. Yeah. Made all the knockoffs. That would have been <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I digress, but back to The Fly. Back to The Fly. So as we talked about earlier, there's at the very beginning – after the title sequence, they go through, and then a cat runs across some, you know, factory. Right. It's the Lom's uh, factory, right? And they're, uh, this is one of the only things that they changed from the original story. Instead of France, they were actually in um, uh, Canada. Yeah. So they weren't that far away. Right. But everybody in Canada in this movie has a very thick accent, <laughs> which is crazy, um, because you think they're in France, but they're not. No, I thought they were. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But they're in freaking Montreal. <laughs> uh, there's parts of Canada where I mean they still speak French. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can see, especially back then. Yeah, 1958. I'm sorry, Canadians, if I've offended you. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So so he's doing his rounds right, and he um he actually 
hears uh, something going off, some machine. So he runs to the, or he doesn't really run. He, he leisurely takes a stroll. And then here's it his second time, right? By the time he gets there, he sees this woman um, standing in front of a drill press or whatever you call that press. A, a big mechanical press. It's like a 500-ton uh, a press or some yeah, shit like yeah. that. Like they're making car parts, yeah. you know, flat ones. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This piece of metal flat. Yeah. That's what you use. I never really That's paid. That's adamantium, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> never really paid attention to what they did or, yeah, what, what their deal was. How the the company worked. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, so I don't remember him actually going too far into detail with it. Right, right, right. So, home dude. But it was made for making metal flat. Right. Or flat horror. If they if they yeah. put the stroke count at up zero. and then they do the uh, the level part at zero level or something. Impact like at zero. Impact at zero. Yeah. So that basically is like crushing. That's liquefying shit. Yeah. You know, because you're hitting so hard. And I think it was fifty tons. 50 tons, yeah, set yeah. to 50 tons, two strokes. Yep. <laughs> so all we, see, all we really see, and this is not a very graphic movie, which is really cool, because they, they, they make you think about what it would look like, right? right. So it's, it's very PG. Uh, <laughs> so we just see a body right there, right? And Vincent Price um, in the next scene gets called basically by a woman. Helene. Yeah. Um, who is the, the wife of... Um, his Andre, his yeah, brother, his brother, yes. right? And he's like, "Okay, I'll be right over." You know, give me five minutes. And then he's like, "Wait a minute!" As he's heading out the door, somebody else calls, and <laughs> or no, he calls. He calls, he calls the, the inspector. inspector. And what's so cool? Okay, for two things in this scene. One, I did not realize I've never worn a smoking jacket like he is when he gets the phone call. He's got yeah. the robe thing on yeah. that's like a jacket <laughs> <laughs> over like a tie and shirt. Yeah. And I'm like, is that how that happens? Do you put that on like you take off your jacket jacket and you put that on over your regular? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I have like a bathrobe that I never wear. Right, right. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like well, with the hot springs or something. He, he does wear a sweater the whole time that has a button down at the very bottom, which kind of has this weird cut to it. Yeah. And he's wearing it underneath his suit jacket. Um, yeah, just and yeah, it's it's crazy, and it's like you're you're that cold. Shit, <laughs> Canada must be cold. <laughs> and then when he calls Inspector, is it Charis? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Inspector Charis. He um he's at like the Infinium Club. Yeah, and he's playing chess, and I'm like, I want to go to the Infinium Club. It's like everybody there was playing chess yeah, too. Yeah, just playing chess, chilling out. That was, and they had a cool like chess set too. Yeah. That, but they, uh, but it, in one part they show um, Vincent Price's chess set, mm -hmm. and it looks pretty badass yeah. too. <laughs> Weird chess yeah. theme yeah. going on here. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was cool. I'm like, the Infinium Club sounds like some uh, off the chain right. like club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's 1958, so yeah. they're playing chess. Right, right. And right. he's like, oh, I'll be right over. <laughs> so then they they Anyways. go yeah so they go to meet her they show up both at the same time because the inspector's like hold up i'll come get you in about five minutes right like he's gonna come pick him up and shit right well there's a murder yeah <laughs> so they're i mean in, we don't know that but we do i guess kind of yeah, there's we something there, we going know there's on. a murder right 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 we don't know that they know that there's a murder it's a murder it was a it wasn't a bear's murder <laughs> No, wasn't so. a Sasquatch. It was no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but callback. Yeah, so <laughs> so they're so they're at the press, and of course it's like one arm and a a head is crushed under this thing. Right. right. So he's got to identify him as like there's a scar twice. His, yeah, a scar in his left leg. Right. Um, runs up a his, war wound. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, oh, okay, and he's like, yeah, that's him. Right. So. You notice the sheet is kind of up too, like his head's flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he said it would flatten, like even at that, like it would make metal flat. You yeah, know it, would I mean? it would disintegrate. It disintegrate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he checked. He's like, okay, which is different than the disintegrator integrator, which we'll get into later. Right. 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 So <laughs> that is crazy. Huh? <laughs> um, so yeah, he's like, oh yeah, you push this button and this goes down. And it's like, oh, okay. And because he has to raise it up, right? Right. And then right before they're about to go talk to 
um, his brother's wife, his si- uh, yeah, his sister in law. Um, they he notices he's like, wait a minute, the stroke counts at two. How could this be possible? You know, well, and even Gaston comes in and is like, yeah, I heard it twice. Yeah, he's like, yes, me heard it twice. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah he's he's the <laughs> thickest of them all. Yes, <laughs> I heard le sound, le loud. <laughs> I am going to do bad French accent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get out of Gaston. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then they end up. <laughs> they, I guess, he lives across the street from the factory, right? Yeah, he must. He probably lives on premises. Yeah. He. I mean, he's close by. Yeah. Um, close enough to where she ran. <laughs> she yeah. didn't get in a car and leave. You know, she right. just went across the hall. <laughs> she's like, "I'm home." <laughs> <laughs> so they go in, and she's like, "Yeah." I killed my husband. It wasn't suicide. I did it. And he's like, why? I can't tell you that. Yeah. Well, why not? I can't tell you that either. Well, why did you? I can't tell you that. <laughs> and so she's like going like whatever, kind of going a little nuts too. Right, right. Because she just apparently killed her husband. Because Vincent Price keeps saying, you know, the whole time, she wouldn't have harmed him. She wouldn't harm a fly. She wouldn't. And they do use it. She's like, she wouldn't harm a fly. You know they they uh, they love each other. They doesn't they even love. I life. think it's that they wouldn't harm a fly. Yeah, right. Yeah, they they love life. So Little much. do you know. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the movie's called The Fly. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of flies in this movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> so of course, uh, another day passes, and then homegirl's in bed. Right. Right. So that's when you know she's like, "Can I get up yet?" And she's acting kind of crazy. Because she wants to, but that's, we find out even before they get to the place, get to her house, that um, Vincent Price is in love with her. Right. Which is kind of nuts. He's like, well, she was in love with my brother. I was right. like, okay. <laughs> Sucks for you right, right. now. <laughs> Yikes. Maybe it'll work out in the end. Yeah, and he's an inspector, so he's already pulling shit out of his ass. Yeah, <laughs> he's just pulling shit out of his ass. You know, right. he's like, "Oh, you're in love with her. Uh, you got me. You're a good inspector, <laughs> Columbo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like an open and shut case. Yeah. It really is. She's like, "Yeah, I did it." And so she. But the only thing is whether she did it or if she did it and is crazy. He even says that. Right. You know. Because it's such an easy thing. And he he thinks she's crazy. Right. At first, he's just like, yeah, she's not so. Whatever. Right. You know, and then the inspector's got to kind of, like, prove it somehow. Right. You know? Um, so this is where, um, how does he hear about the fly? The, or, but, yeah, how does he hear about, the the weird fly that he kind of convinces her that he has he's like no I got it um well so there's like earlier on when they're showing some stuff leading up to is that now or is that because the... she tells the story right right you know right. after he's basically been like oh no I have it I oh, have it because in... the, yeah that's absolutely right yeah. and he's I think a fly lands and that sparks the conversation right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, well, it was, it, they come into the, they, he comes in there and she's into still in bed, room. right? Yeah, she's like, it's in bed in a room yeah. with a nurse that hangs out next to her. Generally. Right, right, right. And um, it, because she was told to, to watch her, right? The right. inspector told the nurse to keep an eye on her all the time. Right. Um, so somehow they get into where he knows that there is some sort of a, a fly or something like that that she's looking for. And he's like, oh, no, I got it. Just tell me what happened. She's that's, like, okay, so you know. That's not the inspector, though. No, no, that's Vincent that's Price. Vincent Price, yeah. Yeah so, he's, yeah, so he's sitting by the bed, and he's like, just please. You know? I got any. He, he straight up lies to her. He's like, I got it. Yeah. Tell me what happened for real. Now that we yeah. know. And she's, she's like, like you know? you'll, you'll destroy it? Yeah, yeah. Are, are you promise me you'll destroy it after this? And we're like, okay. Then he goes and gets the inspector. Yeah, because she's like, go. She tells him, "Go get the inspector." I'm not telling the story twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. I can't yeah, do this, it. No, I can't this, do it. It's too long to do it two times. <laughs> it's too weird. Yeah, who'd want to relive that again? Now you're on the talk show. Ho- yeah, so oh, yeah, killed him twice. <laughs> uh, so that's when we get the uh, the doodly doots. 
Horribly, 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 horribly. And she um, starts telling the story. So it shows him as a loving family, you know. he's uh, They're playing on the floor together. Um, her and um, the boy, and she's like, oh, well, you never come out of your, your uh, laboratory anymore. You know, you're always downstairs working on something. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Want to fight about it? I'm going to interrupt for just a half a second. Before we get the story... We get a great line when they're when Francois is with the boy, and uh, he says something about the white fly there. That's where he gets it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's like, yeah, she changed her not her mind. You know how women are. Oh yeah. And then I was like, oh, and then that pays off later. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, hey, <laughs> whoa, I the kid said corroborated the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. From the beginning. Ah. <laughs> uh, how did that happen? That's not that weird fly again. <laughs> Dude. But yeah, so on to the story. I'm sorry. I'm back on to the Okay. So. So we're knee deep in the laboratory at this point, right? So basically, um, yeah, he's he's like, here, come down. Let me show you something. So she, he, he's, of course, he's got the key. Everything's under lock and key. Yeah. They got the sliding metal door. You know, he walks in and she's like, whoa, what is this? Yeah. Because Vincent Price does end up going down before um, when him and the inspector were looking at his laboratory. Yeah. They went down and he was like, this is the work of a madman. You know, like it was all destroyed. Right. So then, of course, we're in the doodly doot. We're in the, <laughs> we're in the past. And um, and he's like, well, here, come, come to my lab. I want to show you something. This is very, this is incredible. Right. He's like, okay. So while Philip goes and plays with his pussy, right, right, right. He's like, "Here, play with Dandelo." Awesome. We don't find out that Dandelo's the name yet. I don't think. I think he just goes over and picks up the cat. Yeah, yeah. But Dandelo <laughs> is like one of the main bad guys in the Last Dark Tower book. Really? Yeah. And wow. I'm like, Dandelo. Where do I know that name from? The Fly. There you go. That's where he got it from. Yeah. Huh. There you go. Shout out to Dandelo. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so he, he, he basically tells her, hey, what if you could do this? What if you could move? And he gets the family heirloom. Yeah, which was made in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and they kind of laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, because they're a loving and couple. And ever. Yeah, yeah, they're like the best couple ever. Yeah. They really are. They love each other a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so he puts the uh, the plate in there, and then he's like, okay. So he sets the deal, and you get one of the best kind of like laboratory things since Frankenstein. This is what I learned from the fly. Neon, flashing, mm-hmm. science. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's just got to turn a dial, and he puts like a what a forty-five second timer on it, right? First, Thirty yeah, second or whatever. something like that, right? Turns it there, and it's like boom, 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 boom. He does right. a boop. <laughs> <laughs> the weird sound. She goes over there, and she's like, "No way, you're fucking lying to me. You s- s- stupid." She doesn't cuss. This is she, yeah, movie yeah, from 1950. Yeah, she's like, "You're a <laughs> fucking liar." You know? <laughs> he's like, "Nah, <laughs> fuck that." Let me show you. So, so he's like, "Look, it's right so here." Not the way I remember the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and you know, of course, she's still like, "Whatever, you're just messing with me. How do you do this trick? Are you a magician?" And then, watch as I'm about to make this heirloom disappear. Yeah. And then she's holding it, and of course she gets a laugh. She's like, <laughs> "Maybe you need to check something." She's like, "I don't want. I hope you never put me in here." It's like, why? <laughs> and she turns it over, and Made in Japan is it's all backwards. backwards. Dun, dun, dun. So, but this is where we do get the explanation of the disintegrator integrator, um, <laughs> which is what the teleportation machine's called. Disintegrator integrator. Because it disintegrates you, and then it integrates your atoms back together. Just like television. Or whatever. Yeah, was, just yeah. like television. Yeah, how he explains, he explains it, it out. It. Yeah, that radio yeah. waves. And yeah, how and you just pick it out of the air. Yeah. And you're like, oh, and okay. Decode cool. it, yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We do so, it's get, very ahead of its time on it's, that part of it. Sure. I mean, TV was already out. 58. But, yeah. No, not TV. <laughs> <laughs> Disintegrator, integrator. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what if we could transport troops? What if we could do this? I think this? that's the heyday of the science fiction comic books and stuff like that. It had to be like 58, right? Yeah. Like uh, what well, People had to be living the life because that was before the comic code, right? I think so. I don't know that for a fact. Mm. 
I'm not going to fact check myself because I'm lazy. Yeah. So moving on. But yeah, yeah. So so he's basically trying to change the world. Right. You know, um, like trying we can to... deliver like there'll, there'll be no starvation. We can yeah. deliver food instantly. You know, no famine. Yeah. Nothing will be out of reach. And then pretty soon you'll have, everybody will have one in their house. Right. He's like, and then you can go anywhere you want to. Yep. Cool connections. Right. Yep. He's thinking about the future, which. We still haven't figured out a disintegrator integrator yet. I'm um, okay with that. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. want to do it because Star Trek, the way they did that too, is like, didn't they like disintegrate their their stuff and then shoot them down to the planet or something? Like that? I don't know. That's how a transporter works. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of the idea. I think, Sometimes the teleportation device, but uh, yeah, I'm not a big Trek guy. As you know. <laughs> Um, so just because my last name is funny. <laughs> what is that, Dan? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so, so they he's have, like, he's they have a, the, that moment where they're like, oh, so very fortunate, right? I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. Yeah, I what? love you. <laughs> and, and so he's like, immediately, like, wait a minute, I got to think about this. Yeah, he's go, he's like, yeah. go just back to work. He's yeah. gonna fix the problem. And she's like. <laughs> Man, <laughs> stand up and say, God, let me get your lunch, you know? <laughs> Fucked up 50s movie. And then, like, right, this is the messed up part of this, though, because right away when he figures it out, come here, we're going to try a pussy port. Yeah. <laughs> right. He takes Dandelo, like, doesn't start with, like, a guinea pig. No. If that's what you're going to do. Doesn't start with, like, some mold, I don't know, yeah, you know, something bacteria. Right. He doesn't start with any of that. He starts with the family cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he secretly hated Dandelo. Yeah. This <laughs> like, was I got allergies, mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got allergies up in this bitch, man. Uh so so honestly, they fuck up right here and I realized it. Okay. So whenever he puts Dandelo in there, right, with the There's saucer not near of milk, as much neon. Yeah, no, I thought that too. I'm like, how come he's not part milk? <laughs> <laughs> how did he not become a plate? You know, it's the the Somehow, hand, the, the plate of uh, a plate's hand. <laughs> if it came out like that, and it was part milk, right? I, I, and cats are lucky and have seven <laughs> lives. It would be Milky Chance, which is a rapper, <laughs> or not really. Whatever he is, yeah. he's like, a, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, it's weird. <laughs> but, Shout out to Milky J. Yeah. But yeah, he transfers the paper over first. Yeah. And yeah. then he's like, oh, yeah, because oh. yeah, he gets it right. Yeah. He's like, hey, pussycat, come here. And then he's like, yeah, she disappears or he disappears. And then you hear it. The disembodied sound of a cat. <laughs> well, how does it make it vocal? I don't, I don't got know. No vocal cords or is it on the house? No, because we never see Dandelo again. He's in the ether. Yeah, but I'm saying, how did he say it? Right, right. You well, know. apparently, I mean, I'll tell you that at the very end. But oh, okay, wow. so so they're like, "Where's the cat at?" He's right. always gone. And then she convinces him to go to the um, the ballet. Right? No, he just comes. He's like, "Let's go to the ballet. Let's celebrate." Yeah, you know, right. I got something to show you. Right. Because he does. They go to the ballet, and then he's still doing work, and she's like. <laughs> Man, yeah, she's like, no work at the ballet, son. Yeah. Man, <laughs> ballet tickets are expensive. I wouldn't right want to be doing work there either. I don't necessarily think I'd want to be at the ballet, but right, you know, right. I would for my wife. Yeah, so if she wanted to go to the ballet. I'd be like, let's go to the ballet. I, I guess they had good ballets in Canada back in the day in Montreal. Yeah, maybe that's the only thing you do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 1950s. Let's go to the, the ballet. Right, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> And so they come she gets, home. She starts getting frisky. Yeah. She's like ready for frisky time. Trying to make that other baby. Right, right. So this is where they have their little champagne toast, right? Yep, yep. And um, he's like, I did it. <laughs> She's like, no way. And does a guinea pig. Like, don't do that. And puts the guinea pig in there. And then the guinea pig comes out the other side. He's just fine. Right, he's not backwards or anything, like inside out or anything. Right. She's like, oh. we get the we get the fade out of Frisky before yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, and fade to Friskyville, and she's like, "This is the greatest thing ever." And he's like, "Yeah, I can kind of hang out now. I, I've <laughs> done my job, you know." Uh, 
Well, he's like, dude, he's laying on the coolest lawn chair in the world. It's like a chase thing, but it's huge. Yeah. It's so big, and it's got that thing, you know it pulls down like a shade. Ah. Oh. Son. Dang. I was like, I'm a little jelly. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like a hammock. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little jelly, Andre. Come on, no. <laughs> and, and, and he's like. I want to get the original one from the fly, though. Ooh, that would be cool. That would be bitching. Yeah. Or the same kind. I just uh. want it. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so like I'm sitting where Andre sat. I don't remember the guy's name that played him, but I'm sitting where Andre sat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, this is where uh, like Vincent Price is gonna come over for lunch, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's Watch like, that. "Oh, hold on a second, I'm gonna because we're gonna tell everybody now. We're gonna release this to the freaking world, right? Right, right. Um, you know, he did a good job convincing the cat that it was going to be the most famous cat in the world after that, but it just disappeared. So <laughs> he goes down, right? Because he's already he's already integrated and reintegrated himself, or disintegrated and integrated himself. Right. That's why he knows it works. Right. So then, apparently, he does it again. Yeah, absolutely. When nobody else there, no nothing. That's right. Not, I don't know. Right, so I don't know. And then there's a note on the door, right. the sliding metal doors, and it says, "You know, I'm not going to be able to make lunch. Busy working." Right. And even Vincent Price is like, "Oh, his handwriting keeps getting worse and worse." You know, right. it's like, "Oh, okay." And he doesn't come back up. So, Never. so um, <laughs> the maid's like, "Hey, uh, I just went and got the master's food." And for some reason, he didn't eat anything. Right. Maybe I should take him down somewhere. She's like, what? So he goes down there, uh, or she goes down there and knocks on the door, and he's completely quiet, right? She does eventually get in there, and then he's like, bring... No, he slips a note under the door. Bring milk with sugar in it? No, milk laced with rum. Oh. Why would... I don't know. Yeah, milk and rum. At least that's what I thought it said. Uh, I don't know. Milk that makes you go yum. Maybe it was milk and sugar. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So he comes in, or or she comes in, puts it down. He's covered in a black kind of a deal. One arm's hidden. It's covered in a black like towel over his head or something yeah, like yeah. that, like a sheet. Yeah. Um, and she's like, "Why? Well, you know, you need to come up. You you need some rest." And he's like, "No." So he can't talk. And then she devises a not once for yes, two for no, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So she's like, whatever, do whatever you want to, right? And so days pass, and he's still there. And he's like, come back come back tomorrow, and I'll give you the full story. So then he's typing at that point. Right. You can hear him typing. And uh, so she gets a little bit. It's like he didn't prepare. <laughs> well, I don't think he prepared to be a fly. Well, yeah. I mean, he could have typed I up mean, his little explanation. Yeah. going on. He could have typed up his explanation over the night. You would have thought. And he was like, kick, kick, this kick, is kick, what happened. Kick, 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 yeah. kick, kick, you know? And <laughs> like, here you go. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. Like a, like but a. He was maybe at that point, he was still trying to fight off the fly instincts of his arm to I, attack. Him. Yeah, I know. That was wicked too. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. He's I, got his hand in his pocket the whole time. You never get to see it. No. Nope. Yeah, not, not for a little while. Right. Um, and then she finally, you know. Is like I need to see you. We need to do this, and that. This is the big reveal. It was after like a, another part of it, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, like every she'll keep she keeps bringing him up food and or the milk or whatever, the milk rum, whatever it was, milk rum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's like that slurping sound yeah. coming through a straw almost. You right, know? right. And he, he even eats a steak one time and he's, he's like, like clawing it. Yeah, like ripping it apart with his Yeah, hand. It's like, oh. <laughs> he sounds like Leatherface <laughs> in front of a, a tub of Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's just get to let's just get to the one of the, the coolest reveals of all time. Right on. Um Basically, she's talking to him and like, do this and do that. He's like, no. And then it falls off. And she gets to see the fly head because she takes it off. And it's awesome looking. Yeah, yeah. That it's reveal not, was crazy. It's not cheesy. No. In the latter movies, it became cheesy. Well, yeah. This was just like, boom. 
Yeah. And they there there it wasn't like overly big fly face or anything stupid like that. It actually looked like the head was smaller than his shoulders. Like it didn't bit. belong. Yeah. You know, like it didn't belong. But that was like a twenty pound prosthetic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. And um yeah, that was like one of the best effects. Like ever, it looks so good, and the way that they make the the mouth move and everything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So she screams she, and passes out. Right, but right before that, you do get to see her through his eyes. Yeah. With the like mini, all insect. The, yeah, all the fly eyes. Yes, yes, whatever. <laughs> the eight thousand <laughs> eyes. Yeah. And she's like, ah, that's the image on the poster, and, and uh, <laughs> she passes out. So he picks her up, puts her down. And he's about to like eat her face, <laughs> but he doesn't. No, because he has to stop his hand. Yeah, he's like, no, you're not gonna claw. Her. The human hand stops yeah. the fly hand from doing bad things. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, it looks a lot like Jim Carrey, f- like doing the claw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know where he got his motivation. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. So I wonder if they both got their motivation from this movie. Right. Right. Maybe. I bet Bruce Campbell did. Yeah. <laughs> so so basically, she's like, well, why don't you go back through again? She finds out what happens. You know, I didn't notice. I went through one time, and it was just fine. I went through the second time, but there was a fly in there. Right. So. Um, Our atoms got mixed up. Yes. And, you know, right before she goes down there that one day, the little boy comes in the house and is like, oh, I've caught the weirdest fly. I got it right here. And she's like. Get just rid of, get that. Rid of Let it. Let that out. Yeah. And he's like, oh, darn it. But that's the fly. Come to find out, that's the fly they need, but maybe not the fly they deserve. Right. <laughs> so you get that whole deal where she's kind of like going crazy because he's downstairs. She knows. Right. He's um, tried to send himself through again. Right. He and comes back out. He's the same thing. Right. You know? Um, because he have mixed it up and put like a different animal in yeah, with him. That's yeah, a, like, exactly. A, eventually, you get something cool. Right, right. Bring me a tiger <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or a t- thundercat. <laughs> yeah, I think honestly that in the the short story, he actually gets fused with Dandelo too. Oh, really? At one point, yeah. I, I don't kinda, know. I've never read the story. Yeah, me neither. But that's what it said. Oh, well, yeah. I'll have and that fifteen-minute video it might be worth watching. Or <laughs> yeah, reading, rather. Um, but uh, yeah, so he goes through. He's still not. But slowly he's fading away. Right. His brain. He, yeah, he's having trouble thinking mm-hmm. and spelling. Yeah. Um, but he still loves her. Yeah, yeah. You know, he can't type or anything like that. They eventually... So she's got to find the fly. Yeah. And there is our tie back to earlier when he makes the the line about women change. You know how women are. Mm-hmm. She, she changed her mind. and We had to find the fly because they spent the whole next day... Looking for the fly. And they find it. Now, here's my only problem with this movie. The whole movie this is my only problem. They catch it with the net, and it flies out of the net, right? Well, it's out of the net. No, no, no. Yeah, when she the first time that she gets it, it gets oh out of the yeah, net. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the little boy caught it on yeah, the table, yeah. but it, when they go to get get it, it comes out of the net. Yeah, because she yeah it goes too fast. So, what does she use to go try to stop it? When they get it trapped in the glass, a curtain, the net <laughs> that it flew out of last time. Why yeah. did you think that was going to work? And who has little cracks like that in their windows? Um, it's fifty-eight. Who knows? Nah, I don't know. Right? They seem like they have a lot of money and right. they own a factory. Yeah, and then they have cracked windows. Right. So yeah. she's like, "I'll and go outside." Need to get on that. Shit. The the little kid was actually better at the better at catching bugs than she was. Well, yeah. I mean, he's a professional at this point. Right, right, right. He's a little kid in the 50s. What else he got? Caught a lot of flies. Yeah. Uh, He's a fly catcher. Keeps him in a matchbox. Right, right. So, so it gets away again. So she's like, ah. And she gets the the maid in on it. Everybody like that. They're all, like, the maid goes to swats one of them and she freaks out. He's like, whoo. That's a black-headed one, not a white-headed one. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of white. They're kind of racist, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> so, so he basically says, if you don't find that fly, you know, I'm not going to be the same. Right. You know, there's nothing else. So she comes down and is like, well, back to the drawing board. We'll, we'll do it tomorrow. And he's we'll like, get no. You tomorrow. I'm going She has a breakdown, nuts. and the sun comes over and is yeah. like, we'll get that fly tomorrow, Mom. 
Yeah, it's but I mean, she literally is like gung ho when she goes downstairs. He's like, "Listen, right? <laughs> you need that fucking fly because I can't. I'm not gonna live. Right? I need that fucking fly. It's time to take me out. Right? <laughs> so he erases the blackboard and he writes down. Um, you'll have to. What does he say? Not without the fly. You know, and then while he's falling because the, the hand is going nuts right, too, right. Um, trying to hurt him, and he's fading quick because he picks up like all of his paperwork, trashes the whole place, yeah, trashes the entire place. After he kind of like um, reveals himself, you know, he's just like I'm a fucking abomination, and he burns all of his materials, everything right. like that, right? Except for the neon lights. <laughs> He saved those. Well, um, there's no reason to break those. You can't prove anything. Right, right. So he's basically like, hey, uh, you're going to have to do it. And she's like, I don't want to do it. He's right. like, but please? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. I mean, it's like, you, you're. Well, she, she does. She's like, she makes a, you know, the ploy of like, you're still a thinking person. You still have a soul. You have no right to take your life. Right. And. And he's like, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm changing. I'm yeah, not, this isn't working. You know, like I'm, I'm fading fast. You know. Yeah, my my brain is being taken over. It's like integrating with it. Speaking of a fly, I think we had one just right here. <laughs> I invited him for the show. Cool. Special guest, the fly. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> um, but yeah. So then, warble, 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 and now we're back in the present time. Well, not, that's that's. Well, not yet, I guess, because we do go through, like, they actually show him getting moited. Yeah, he's like, all right, let's go do it. And then we find out why it was two as well, because they do it, and they smash his head. Well, she presses the down arrow. Right. right? <laughs> the red button runs over and grabs him, and he's like, whoa, step off. Right. Right? So he pushes her away to and only gets his head under. Right. Squish. And then she's like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead to crush the arm. Right. She was smart thinking, though. Right, 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 right. right. If you're going to do it. But my question is this. I guess, I mean, if it crushes it to nothing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I guess. It's not going to crush it to nothing. Well, if it makes metal nothing. Well, there was a blood on it. There was. So it, like, pressed it out. You know what I mean? yeah. I just wonder if there was like some fly brain goo, you know? Or there there like, had hey. to have been. Of course, it was 1958. So they were like, oh. Science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. It looks like one of those giant ants we killed. <laughs> so, yeah. So she puts the, the hand underneath it. She hits it again. Right. And that's when Gaston comes in. Yes. Like, hey, madame. And he's like, she zoink. And she takes <laughs> off. And then now we warble, warble, warble back because that was the beginning of the movie. Mm hmm. And uh, so she tells her story. And she's told her story. He's like, Whew, weight's been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> right. And uh, the inspector basically just tells Vincent Price, look, do you believe this? <laughs> yeah. He's like, no. I kind of want to. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and the inspector is actually a kind of more grounded person because yeah. he's like, I don't know. It could be. And Vincent Price is like, no, she's guilty. Hang her. You know, because that's basically what's going to happen to her. She's going to hang. Um, Vincent Price didn't say no, that. No, 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 not that way. He was like, I, you know what? I still He's think. He's like, I want to. It could yeah. be. Yeah. Even the inspector's like, nah, that's too crazy of a story. Mm-hmm. Not going to happen. But he's a little bit more grounded. Right. right. You know, um, which we see for the first time in any kind of movie. Right. The inspector's like, oh, got it. Let's right. figure out a plan. So they come back in. The next day, because um, she's like, all right, let's go. I'm ready to go. Whew. I'm so relieved everybody knows um, that I didn't kill my husband. I just killed this creature. Right. So um, the nurse like is like, oh, yeah, you're ready to go. The inspector comes in with a warrant because right. Vincent Price meets him over there. Right. And he's sitting on the bench. And that's when you hear the, help me, right. help me. But that's before something else. <laughs> As things happen in this yeah. movie, sometimes before other things that happen. Yeah, in that's before the ending. <laughs> you know, the famous "Help me." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, "Huh?" He just he doesn't kinda, hear it. Obviously, nah. He's having this weird introspective moment. Yes. You know, and um, well, there's a lot going on. His brother just died. His 
she's being committed. She's either crazy or whatever, right? She's it, they were they were coming to commit. Her, oh yeah, they brought know? the white truck. Yeah, and you know? all the the white guards. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, with the white the orderlies. Yeah, yeah, the orderlies. Yeah. yeah. So they all come in, and she's like, not What's like this? the disorderlies. That's a whole different yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, we need to cover that one. So <laughs> then they be a baracus her. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's like, oh, I don't want to go to. Oh. <laughs> you know, like she's getting I don't want to airplane. ride on no truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. Fool. <laughs> so the boy comes in, and this is where, because this all kind of wraps up in a very, very neat cool. yeah. ending. Absolutely. Vincent Price is walking out, and he's like, you can't see your mom like this, right. Philippe. Come on. Let's go take a walk. And he's like, oh, well, okay. You know, it's like, where's dad? Uh, he kind of blows it off, too. Right. You know? And he even gives the kid wine at one point, too. Does he? Yeah. I yeah. don't remember that. But Vincent Price and him are sitting having dinner, and he um, he takes a bottle of wine, pours a little bit in the bottom, then fills the rest of it up with water and gives it to the little kid. Oh. Little kid drinks it. It's like, mm, this is really good. <laughs> like, whoa. Hey. That's how it was back in the day. Yeah. When in not France. Right. <laughs> um, when in Canada. Yeah. So they're walking out the door and he's like, hey, I saw that weird looking flag and I wanted right. to tell her that. And he's like, what? Where is it? Oh, let me show you. It's right over here um, between the bench and uh, the. The tree or whatnot. Right, right. Whatever. So, and he goes, well, show me. Takes him there, and guess what? Help me. Yes. Help me. <laughs> the fucking fly is caught That's in the spider web. thick-ass spider web, too. That's crazy. <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> and that spider's big as shit, too. <laughs> well, because, you know, we're close up. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, holy shit. I see the proof. Right. Runs upstairs, grabs home dude. They come downstairs, and they're both staring at this thing right before it's about to get eaten by that spider. The spider is moving incredibly slow. Yes. And and when I say that spider web was thick, like just looking at it between the bush and the thing, you're like... How did a spider that get doesn't that look done? Like a spider web. Yeah, it was like Charlotte's web. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was literally like Charlotte's web. It was big it was in the like corner. You of the bought room. it at Target. Yeah, <laughs> Just put it up. <laughs> so, right as soon as the little guys get about to get eaten, the inspector picks up a rock and then just crushes everything. Right. He's like, which fulfilled oh. the promise of killing it when they found it. Mm-hmm. So he's freaking out. Right. Vincent Price is like, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. You saw and I saw. You saw, we, we saw. saw so him. guess what? She's not guilty. He didn't do that. They put together that whole story like right. he had to have committed suicide. The first one was this and this. Right. And, and, you know, and he's like, well, I've been wrong before. And this is <laughs> <laughs> like they completely core up. And he's like, Vincent Price is like, yeah, whatever you say, man. Whatever. You, yeah, it wasn't her. Right. You know? So basically, and then we cut to the end, to where they're outside the croquet area. Yes, because <laughs> that's how much money they have with their cracked windows. They have yeah. a croquet area with a, like little concrete <laughs> bench to sit on. Yeah. Um, they're like, hey, let's go play croquet. <laughs> Who's got a croquet mat? Uh, Nineteen fifty-eight, rich yeah. people, I guess. But. Uh, <laughs> And and now Francois is living his best life because he comes over to pick up the nephew to take him. Um, where were they going? The zoo. Yeah, the zoo. You're right. And uh, she invites him to dinner, and we already know how much in love he is with her. So he's gonna slide right in there. He's gonna Francois his way in. It's he's gonna slide right in there two ways. <laughs> hey. Right into her heart. She does like to go to Friskyville, <laughs> yeah. as yeah. we found out. He's like, yes, I finally <laughs> win. So Francois for the win. <laughs> yeah. So that is the ending of the original fly. And again, I, I I thought what was great about this is it's it's more of a suspense. Um, like, and when I say suspense, I mean more of a mystery. Like they don't just yeah. give everything to you. It's no. a slow reveal. Yep. Um, you know, we get to see the arm first. You know, There's only one see... big jump kind of a, oh my God. And moment. even that's not, it just looks, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really, I mean, awesome looking. It's done well. 
especially given the time. Fuck yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's another version of this movie that I absolutely love as well. Yes. Um, and I think we'll get into that maybe in a, a future show. Oh, yeah. Down the line in the series of The Fly. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, this one I think is, for one, brilliant. It looks great. Cinematography is the same as anything that would ever yeah, have yeah. been at the time. Um, but as far as like a level of sophistication, I guess, to a sci fi movie, yeah. it wasn't them. No, you know, it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't nearly as kind of stylistic as, say, uh, the day the earth stood still. Sure. The way that they did the, the, the lighting in that was pretty awesome. Absolutely. This um, one was just straightforward right in your face. But it was well written. It was well acted. Mm-hmm. It was well directed. People and, put and their... it looked good. Yeah, And that's why it made money. It. it made legit money. I think it was like $3 million. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember what the budget was offhand. But it was, I think it was like six times or something like that, if I remember correctly. Well, like I was saying about the budget, nobody really knows. It, yeah, well, I mean, even if you take the median of what they say it is. Yeah, even 300,000. I mean? Yeah. You say 300,000. Three million, yeah. yeah. So ten times, you know. But I think like the high number I saw was four hundred and sixty something or something like that. You know yeah, what I mean? Almost five hundred. But yeah. either either way, yeah. you know. I would really fun. like to know though if this was the movie that put um, 20th Century Fox kind of. Well, on I think the map. we should do a show about we we've talked about it before doing studio shows, mm-hmm. and I would like the history of the studios, and I think I would be excited to do that. Um, Maybe people will let us know if that's something they want to listen to. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you want us to do like a 20th Century Fox retrospective. Yeah, and we could do other studios as well. I'm mm-hmm. down. Yeah, we can start at the beginning. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get top of that hill. <laughs> um, Beans don't burn. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, what do you think of The Fly? Um, I thought it was great, man. Um, I think, like I said, you know, I can't say enough about the writing for the time and what it was. Um, I know it wasn't his original story, but the screenplay writer did a great job. Um, I was most impressed with that, probably. The acting was spot on. All the actors were pretty good. Minus Gaston was a little over the top. <laughs> but um, there's always got to be that. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. on The Bride of Frankenstein, they had the one woman that screams like every five minutes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um <laughs> So you have your gas stone. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> other than that, I mean, really, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I mean, I would give it. I love it. Yeah. You I, know, I. I give it at least four, four and a half shits. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, that attracts it flies. flies, right? Because yeah, yeah. it, yeah, sugar. Yeah. <laughs> four and a half sugar shits. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we'll have to mark this episode uh, explicit now. Yes. I can, well, I said the F word like 20 times. You did. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever had the Reese's Cakes yet? The what? Reese's Cakes? No. Oh, my God. Mm, okay. Where did that come from? I don't know. We were talking about sweets. <laughs> ah, gotcha, and I was like, you got to have this shit. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's a cake? <laughs> yeah. Reese's? Oh. <sighs> Heavenly. That you can only like find them in one place. Yeah, it's so good. But they're small. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a candy bar size. It's not like a cake size. That's what I was thinking. No, like, no. Like, what? Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I ate me? three of those yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I just became a person who needs insulin. <laughs> 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 I instantly turned into uh, diabetes. <laughs> I am diabetic now. <laughs> the diabetes. <laughs> yeah. Well, this movie I think is it, again it's it's going to be in my top 10. Uh, and again, I just, there's nothing I think you would do more with it. You know what I mean? Like I think they did everything right. Well, they were going to do the effects like him slowly transforming into the fly. Like they did a lot of money, like they did with Brundlefly. Sure, but they didn't do it because they didn't think it was right for the time. Okay, which is kind of crazy to think it was too grotesque for somebody. I could see see that. I mean, because I did read like some of the reviews from like when it came out, Uh, because there was a couple you know that like panned it, Um, but there were some legit. Uh, reviewers that were like, no, this is done really well, and kind of the things we're talking about, you know right, what I right. mean? Um, 
But one of them even said, you know, there are some scary parts. And I'm like... For the time. For 1958, probably. You sure? Mm. But I, it's not for me. It's not that it's a scary movie. It's no, just no, well yeah. done. I don't, I don't consider it a horror. I yeah. don't think I consider it... Sci- science fiction to some degree. Yeah, in a way. Because yeah. he doesn't really well, he, kill anybody. No. He's not a monster that way. Well, it's definitely science fiction because he builds an, a disintegrator integrator. Right. Um which again is 1958 speak for teleportation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I built a teleporter. Tele- no, wait, let's call it something else. Yeah. It's got to be something fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but th- this movie kills it. Yeah. Every time I watch it, I just I always realize I'm like, damn, this I love this movie. Yeah, I, I didn't really, really do. have a bad thing to say about it. I think I probably watch it once or Other twice than a year. Their sh- shitty net <laughs> for catching flies. What? Come on. Yeah, you can have better luck with your hands and yeah. some chopsticks. Maybe like one of those fish, like aquarium nets. <laughs> that might work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not covering a lot of surface that way. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to catch it in the air. Like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> but with that, that's cra- the fly. That's the fly, man. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, now you know about it. Um, if you and you should go, you should watch it 100. Um, percent and if you have seen it, I hope that you learned something about the movie maybe you didn't know. Check out Vincent Price, not just for his movie work. Okay. He's awesome. But check out Vincent Price for who the man was. Absolutely. And you, too, could be a Vincent Fife, Pri- Vincent, Fife? Uh, <laughs> Vincent Price expert if you watch a 15-minute YouTube video. Hey, I am. As a ter- as we've found out. The YouTube University. Yeah, I'll watch right. across that stage. Hey, I'm with that. <laughs> I'm with it. Like I said, that's how I became a mechanic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll gladly walk across that stage every year. <laughs> every 15 minutes. <laughs> well, look out, guys. Um, as always, like like we always have said... Leave Get, a like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, absolutely, man. Help us out. Yeah. And if you really want to help us out right now, man, jump on a social media platform and give us a like there, follow. Um, really trying to drive some... Uh, Spread some, the word, please. Yeah, trying to drive some follows home. We've got some aspirations that we'd like to hit. We've been doing this for a couple years, and we feel like we're in a right spot. I would like to see... Yeah, there's... A, yeah, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> we have some opportunities, but we have to get to a certain level before we yeah. can take care of it. And then we can bring you awesome content. We'll share that coming down, coming down the road. Right, so. right. Because um, we have about, I don't know, six to eight hours worth of extra material <laughs> yeah. that we've cut out of these things. So hopefully you like it. Mm-hmm. And until the next week's, next Thursday's episode, which is going to be... Also The Fly. <gasps> starring Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. And Bam. And that's going to lead us into our Deuces series. Can you guess what's after that? Mm, the Fly 2? No, The Return of the Fly. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. That. The Fly 2. <laughs> I barely want to watch The Fly 2. <laughs> that's a bad movie. Yeah, I'm sure it's They should have awesome. recast. Uh, <laughs> instead of Eric Stoltz in that movie, they should have put um, <laughs> Michael J. Fox. <laughs> should have recast him. And we'll have some through. episodes in between, though, that'll break some of that up, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. We'll have something. So. But, But with that, I think that's peace, brother. Yeah, we're out. Fucker out. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question though. <laughs> we'll keep this for for supplemental stuff. Okay. I was thinking about this today. No, yesterday. What do you think would be the last store that's ever looted in in an apocalypse? The last store ever looted in the apocalypse. Hobby store. Hobby store. You ain't got time for that. Okay, what about a sporting goods store? No, because I think people would go there because you could probably get, like, archery stuff and, you know what I mean? Okay, so getting weapons like baseball bats and yeah, things like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. 
But why is it that every post-apocalyptic movie they have football pads? <laughs> That's dumb. Like, like you can't. I mean, I guess if you're trying to keep zombies from biting your shoulders. But, <laughs> but not even in the zombies. Like, I think know, about, I yeah, think about like witness me. They have like freaking um, shoulder pads on and shit, you know, right. and mohawks, right? You know. <laughs> it, just, it was a, a weird deal. So no, I, I agree. I, I think that they like worship some sort of professional wrestling. Yeah, that was the only eight tape. by ten. It's the tape <laughs> that survives. It's like an eight by ten of Demolition uh. or the Road Warriors. Yeah, SummerSlam, <laughs> SummerSlam ninety. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep that for the end. <laughs>